Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us at the final Massey Music Salon, Jazz at the Creative Edge, the music of Karen Ng. So this is, as I just mentioned, the final music salon of 2024, uh, or the winter of 2024, I should say. Um, it's been a fantastic season, and I think this is an excellent way to wrap up. Uh, we look forward to the following season. If uh, you do enjoy what you're seeing here and you've enjoyed the season thus far, uh, be sure to sign up for our mailing list uh, as it's the best way to stay on top of what, uh, what we're doing next year. Uh, so before we begin, I just want to acknowledge that Massey College is built on the treaty lands and territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, as well as the traditional territory of the Huron-Wendat, Seneca, and Anishinaabeg, Haudenosaunee, and Métis people. This region, directly north of Lake Ontario, has always been a cosmopolitan meeting place where many peoples met and traded. Tikaranto is a Mohawk word meaning the place in the water where the trees are standing. This was once a marshland filled with rivers and trails leading all the way to what we now know as Lake Simcoe. In fact, for thousands of years, that lake was known as Tikaranto. Since we're here to discuss music, I'd also like to acknowledge the profound loss of traditional indigenous songs and language that occurred during the cultural genocide of many indigenous peoples throughout Canada's history. As we learned from Wolastakiuk musician Jeremy Dutcher last year, these traditional songs and languages have become endangered due to the choices made by Canadian political leaders of our collective past, and I support all here in attendance to spend some time engaging with the myriad of indigenous musics that have been and continue to be made on this land. Uh, it is now my great pleasure to introduce the fantastic saxophonist and improviser Karen Ng. Uh, so saxophonist and improviser Karen Ng has already become a key figure at the most creative and experimental boundaries of the Toronto jazz scene. She's also been involved in numerous projects alongside a wide range of musicians, including the Weather Station, the Badge Epoque Ensemble, El Khan, Happiness Project, and Do Make Say Think. And she's currently working with P2P, Kind Mind, Craig Dunsmere and the Dun Dun Band, See Through Four, and many others. Uh, my name, for those of you who don't know, is Sam Little. I'm a junior fellow here at Massey College, completing a doctorate in jazz performance. Uh, in addition to my research on interaction and attention in jazz performance, I am a professional bassist based here in Toronto, Ontario. Uh, so. Long introduction. <laughs> um, um, I, I really appreciate uh, the piece you have in there uh, of the songs and languages that are lost. Uh, our friend Jeremy, um, I, I guess, was a guest here. Yeah, uh, that's before. right. Yeah, last yeah. year. Yeah. Thank you for including that. Oh, <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, and thank you for joining us. Yeah. So I read a brief snippet of your bio, but uh, <laughs> I know, Karen, you've, you've been in You've had mm -hmm. your hands in a whole host of different musics, and one of the reasons that I thought to invite you here was that uh, we at Massey aren't exposed, I think, very much to experimental music and improvised music mm -hmm. in any real sense. And so I'm curious to hear from you, and like, and it can sometimes feel like an impenetrable music to an uninitiated audience. Mm -hmm. My first question is, what drew you to this music, and 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 what? Uh, what sort of keeps you there, I guess? I, I get really excited when people ask me about that because I think um, when you think of the various reasons you're attracted to certain musics, um, especially younger, like certain things where you're like, I can't believe I listened to that, but there's a nostalgic element to it. Or I think a lot of our cohorts in the jazz sort of world, it was this sort of uh, rebelling against something and it's kind of interesting because now this music has landed in in a sort of institutionalized space mm. right um and i think about that a lot and you know it is music it has to do with sound and uh it wasn't necessarily the sound of you know out like abstract music that attracted me there i realized the more i reflect on it that i got here uh because of community like it was mm. i even think back to um, I know Joe, our sound te technician, was talking about uh, he used to play band, you know, or saxophone in school and in, in a concert band. And I was like, that's where I started playing my instrument. And I realized that I, I was in it because of uh, it was like a good hang. Like, I, I really liked being able to, to hang out with people and play. And then we'd get to travel. And 
And then I was like, I guess I'll go to school for music. And then sa same thing, I sort of found a community there. And then when I got out of school, when things got extremely confusing of like, how is this supposed to work? Like, what is life supposed to look like, um, uh, you know, professionally or whatever? Mm -hmm. um, I, I found this very uh, a welcoming community here in Toronto um, a, 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 that is centered around a venue we have here called uh, the Transac. Um, and that community was very open to me, and I felt like it was a community that I could also sort of, it was encouraged to sort of find my own path and find my own voice and find my own way th uh, to, uh, to arrive at whatever music that was. And that um, is not to say that that's not, you know, is, isn't what happens in other kinds of music, but for whatever reason, uh, for me and my personal sort of journey, that's where I landed and I, I really appreciated that um, for once after a lot of schooling, I mean, you know, mm. this is a school and we've all, and I'm very grateful for the sort of skills that were, um, you know, I, I got to sort of hone while I was at school. It was the first time that I, I was encouraged to be myself and not have to sound like others. Um, and then I got really into it and I was just like, well, what can I do? Like, I, like how, you know, yes, we can all sound unique on our instruments, but like, what are the limits of my, uh, of my instrument? Like, what kind of sounds or, or combinations of melodies can I make? that make it not sound like a saxophone, that make it, you know, like uh, that might not fit on here, but I'll, I'll try and make it fit here. Or, you know, I, it, I started getting really interested um, on, yeah, like the experimentation of what can happen with sound in my instrument. Um, mm. And I had a very supportive, and still do, um, I, I'm very, feel very fortunate and grateful that I'm part of this community that we're all constantly supporting each other and in, in sort of um, exploring and that it doesn't necessarily have to land in a place that uh, you know makes sense that we understand or you know it's it's more just about like what could be what could be I don't know like you know and if we're like oh it's probably going to be like this and it's, I'm uh, it's already sort of like maybe I want to go the other <laughs> direction or <laughs> yeah so it is a very much a one having uh, sort of the context and place to be able to do that and to the the actual act of doing that of, of trying to explore and experiment um, Okay. Yeah, that's yeah, a long answer to <laughs> your question. But I, that's yeah. given me a few different thoughts on which direction to go, but I want to linger <laughs> just at the outset on some of your musical traje trajectories and the types of music that you found yourself playing over the course of your career. Um, so I know that you play with a whole host of different types of artists, ranging mm -hmm. from pop artists to post-rock artists to experimental music artists, uh, yeah. yourself being one as well, of course. Um, and I just wonder if you can talk a little bit about, one, some of the, the musical experiences that you've had that maybe were formative to you, mm -hmm. besides just finding this community in Toronto, uh, and that can include, you know, uh, up to the music that you're playing today. Yeah, uh, so I guess going back to this extremely confusing time when I got out of school, and I think uh, I, uh, it does sort of still stem around the Transact in this place where I would, I would show up and there would be like, it's kind of like a monthly get together to just improvise um, as a group with a bunch of strangers, with some friends. Um, and uh, one day I just sat next to the this very tall mustache man and we, uh, and uh, he was playing trumpet and we played together and I was like this is so great and the next day I opened the paper and I saw my friend Charlie in there and he was part of this band called Broken Social Scene and I was like whoa that guy like that was the guy I said and um you know he called me like it really is like it's like you hear about this and like like it's something out of the movies or something where he called me the next week and he's like hey I don't know if you remember me I was that mustache guy that you said and I was like of course and I saw you in the paper like you're in broken social scene that's crazy and he's like yeah I know this is gonna sound crazy but we our saxophone player in our band is uh moved to the mountains of California and is about to become a monk and we need a saxophone player <laughs> and I was just like okay like I don't know who this person is but he was just like can, we, can you fly to Chicago and play with us uh next weekend um and I remember at this point I was in school I was in, playing jazz I was I, I don't know still pretty confused about where I wanted to be musically but I went and uh, and then from there, there's a, a, a whole host of touring bands, or what I say touring bands is, means that is professionally what I, I spend my time on. I travel and play in uh, varying lengths of tours with these uh, sort of um, acts and productions that are uh, maybe slightly um, 
I don't know what to call it. It is a little bit different than when I like go with my friends in a car and we go and play a few cities. Like this, it does sort of. It's a bit more in, in a businessy sort of sense. Mm. Like there's a lot more traveling. There's it's um, set up in a different way. Anyway, um, that that started a long, you know, uh, journey uh, that I'm still on uh, of playing with different kinds of bands like that. And so, uh, and in that life of touring, it's again the sort of uh, community or connection with people like these people that you uh, you don't really even know and you you've suddenly agreed to get in a van for four weeks and live next to each other and be be together uh, they, they become family right so I mean there is this like very human um, uh, or sort of connection aspect that sort of led me down this path of um, music that is not experimental at all. It's very. It's actually quite, you know, set, and you play the same set every night. And it was very interesting to have while this sort of experimental, uh, you know, career and expression of music was happening on one side. I also had this other side where it was the exact opposite. And then so it created this very rich world for me where I had like two s ends of a spectrum, and then everything in between started happening, which was really curious and interesting to me. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I also do realize that in that context where things are very set, a lot of the musicians in those bands are also improvisers and also creative sort of um, experimental uh, lists in their own ways. And here we are traveling and, you know, playing Pitchfork Festival or like, you know, playing on Jimmy Kimmel. <laughs> and I'm looking around and I'm like, you know, next Saturday we're, I'm going to see you at the Transac and we're going to play very strange music. But here we are in this <laughs> setting, like, and it's televised and this is really strange. <laughs> um, but it is, I, I thought it sort of, I feel very fortunate that I have this, um, yeah, just a very rich sort of life in music where it, it, it sort of intersects in so many beautiful ways, but it also goes all over the place. Like it, um, like quite literally, we travel all over the place and we experience all sorts of different things. Um, and I, I guess that part is very, very important to me alongside the musical part and the performance part and the work part that there's also this sort of, um, yeah, relational part to it that mm -hmm. I really, um, yeah, I guess I've already forgotten your question. No, okay. <laughs> like, yeah. you, you totally answered it. That okay, way. okay, I'm not sure. But. Um, <laughs> I, I have a couple questions about, well, first of all, I, I have a comment, I guess, that's about community. And I think it's really interesting what you said about uh, having community here in Toronto that has branched out into, you know, what ultimately is a music career. Uh, being able to sustain an active performance mm -hmm. schedule in mm -hmm. a whole host of different environments. And I can imagine that feeling very grounding in a real sense, mm -hmm. where it's like, as you said, like we're playing this sort of lofty event that it, you know, is highly publicized and has lots of cameras mm -hmm. and seems very like grandiose maybe in some sense. Uh, and yet, you know, at the end of the day, playing with musicians who are also still very interested in just playing music for music's sake and Mm -hmm. experiencing that sort of connection through sound yeah. uh, in, in other environments. So I, I think that that's a really interesting tether, I think, w where one might find themselves just sort of flying off the deep end of the, of the music industry. Right, yeah. Um, I think that there are, there are two sort of avenues in that. Um, one being that, I guess, you know, I think of what it's like to, to tour and to travel and if I were traveling to all these places alone as, as a, uh, on a vacation or as a tourist, it would be very, very different than the experience that um, we sort of get as musicians when we're going and you're actually really, there's no time to necessarily do the, that stuff, but you meet, you, you meet people who live there, who are from there, and, and it's really lovely. And so that part is also, I, I feel like, is very grounding. And I guess the other side of that too is that in the in the more extreme experimental free improv world that I exist in, I literally can. It's very easy to find my people anywhere in the world because it's just so specific and so <laughs> niche and so strange um, that I've been so lucky. I mean, I'm sure you can speak to this too. That uh, all this traveling that I've done. If I go to Berlin, I've, I've spent quite a bit of time there, or I go to. Brooklyn, or I go anywhere that I find my community there very easily because um, there are people who are st who are sort of in that have the same um, you know uh, goals in terms of exploration of music, and mm. that feels very grounding too. So it, it, it's never quite too scary to like go somewhere where I'm like I know I'll find 
my weirdo <laughs> experimental musicians, right. you know, yeah. like in any city, they're, they, they, you know, we're, we're everywhere. We're, I think, curious people in whatever artistic practice you're gonna find them, you know, and it makes it, uh, yeah, a very beautiful experience to go somewhere new and strange and get to still have that groundingness of like totally. a community um, that you can find anywhere, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I love that. Mm -hmm. um, so this leads me to a question about exactly what you just said, building a community and, and in strange places or with strangers. Uh, and I wonder if you can talk a little bit about the way that it is to get to know somebody through music, through oh, a musical connection. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do. Um, so I guess maybe I'll preface this with um, maybe j just for those who aren't musicians here, you know, um, uh, it, it is, uh, I think jazz is, is, is one uh, common place that our, our brains and ears go to where it's just like, yeah, they like get up there and then they just make it all up, you know, and it's amazing. And, and, and that is what is happening. There is a context of repertoire. There is a context of vocabulary. And um, in the free improvised world, which I very much live in, um, you could bring some of that in, but you actually have no idea what's going to happen. You are sitting with a, a, a complete blank slate. But the fact that you're sitting there together is already this like collective agreement that like, okay, we're here. We're going to like, let's just see what happens. And, and it is, um, I don't know, just a very, I, I guess it's a very um, organic way of getting to know someone where there's no, uh, often I have my eyes closed, like I'm not even looking at who they are, like what they look like, and you're just hearing sounds like maybe like, okay, I see a bass, like I can expect some sort of things, but I don't really know. I mean, you know, I've definitely, you know, gotten to know someone where they sit down, like, okay, there's a bass, and then he pulled out, like, two, like, styrofoam balls, and I'm like, okay, <laughs> like, I don't know what that means, <laughs> like, that's going to be crazy, and, and so uh, you do that, and, and I think, I guess, just that collective agreement, we're going to be here, we're going to make sounds, we're going to make something of this nothingness, and when, um, you know, it's a very vulnerable place to put yourself to, so just that immediate, um, collective trust you've, you've agreed upon just by showing up and, and to do this thing and to make the time and space to do it um, mm -hmm. is really lovely. Uh, I, I feel an immediate connection to people um, who are crazy enough to do that with me, you know, <laughs> and, and in any context. And that's like, again, multiplying that for all the cities I've traveled to and all the different people and communities I've, I've been able to engage with. Um, it's amazing. And I, I do feel this, uh, yeah, like it's like a kind of connection that uh, maybe doesn't translate to like maybe you're not going to be the best of friends forever or maybe it's not going to be a romantic relationship maybe a professional one but there is this like uh like forever connection kind of right. you have to yeah. this person and you're like i can't believe like you agreed to just you don't we don't know each other and we've just uh, decided to do this thing together you know so it, it, it's it's really um yeah beautiful to meet people that way mm -hmm. i think um uh yeah, and there's so much to say. I mean, there's so much to discuss. Even just this dinner we just had. I mean, we had some beautiful conversations, and there's so much to talk about. Um, and and you, like, how could you ever, you know, talk about everything in one sitting? So when you take all away, and then it's it's just abstractions and it's just sounds. It's very interesting because maybe, arguably, more or less could be said in that moment with without words, right? Sure. Like, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. It's it's very certainly very interesting. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I love that answer. I thought that was great. I think that also, if you're open to it, would serve as a lovely segue into doing a little bit of playing. Yeah, I'm really happy that uh, Sam has agreed. I was going to play solo, but Sam has agreed to play with me. So, And we have not played together. No, we've never played together. So I love this. So the, exactly what is what I just said. Yeah, you're about to bear witness to that. <laughs> this is what is amazing, too. That I'll, I'll just the one more thing I'll add is that when these sort of free improv things happen, um, it's being created in the moment, and it'll never be the same. Also, because you are all here, who are here, are part of this creation. We're, we're creating this for you. You're helping in this creation, and it'll exist only for this moment, and then and then never again in the same way. So um, the audience is also a huge part in it, and I really appreciate they're all here. Um, yeah, to share this with us, and yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Okay, let's, let's see how work. It goes. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna clip this thing. I'm sorry if it's loud. Oops.
strange. <laughs> <laughs> wow, wow, what a pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah. Hmm. Um, do we want to talk about that a little bit? Sure, yeah, we, we can absolutely do that. I mean, I, yeah, I know that's not questions part, but I'm also just very curious what, um, for those who, you know, may not have heard something like that before, like, what comes to mind or what, what did you think, what did you feel? Feel free to ask questions, and if we don't have a mic at the moment, but we'll just reiterate for the sake of whatever video audience we might have. Oh my god, there's like yeah. an actual mic. Oh, there is, in fact. Mary's going to wander around with, with a mic. It's a very TV-looking mic, like reporter. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, we have two. Okay. Yeah. I, I study emotion and technology, um, and it, it almost seemed like there was like a kind of intimacy, like to the mm -hmm. the moment that like you both shared with each other, and the fact that we were here, like kind of sitting watching it, mm -hmm. um, and then the conversation after kind of almost mirrored like a like a, almost like a post intimacy like <laughs> conversation. It's like oh like like <laughs> like that was kind of fun, wasn't it? Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like there's like um, a, I guess you know <laughs> maybe what I would say is that like. If you put yourself in like a super vulnerable place and like where it's just kind of like I don't know any of you, you know, and I was just like, are they gonna like, like, like what is she doing? Like, what, why is she doing that? Or, you know, and so you put yourself in this like vulnerable yeah. position and you're there together to, just again that agreement to be like, okay, well I don't know, we're here, we're gonna do it. Here you, here you are. Um, <laughs> Yeah, how is that? How could yeah. that not be intimate, right? Like, right. I mean, yeah, and and I'm wondering like how how you figure out that it went well. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. how do you how do you know? That's um, yeah. Or um, I guess maybe if you think about times when it hasn't gone well, like what's what are the differences? Oh, uh, I love that. Yeah, um, I think I often don't uh, necessarily think like, oh, that was bad music. Like, I think I've I've definitely gone to a point in my journey of of expression where I'm like, there is no good or bad, is there? It's not so black and white. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, I think uh, there are certain things that are important to me, like listening is, is a really big part. And I guess like sometimes when I've been like, I don't think that went so well, it's just like, it didn't seem like we were really listening to each other. We were just two people saying something at each other, but not actually, you know? I don't yeah. know how you feel. Yeah, that, I, that's basically exactly yeah, what right. I, would, I would echo is that like, for me, it's, it's not really even a, question of like good or bad it is about the experiential moment and like does it feel like we're connecting in some sense does it feel like it's going somewhere mm -hmm. does it feel like I'm listening well mm -hmm. does it feel like I'm being heard well mm -hmm. um, and does it feel like we're connected in this moment together mm -hmm. you know I'm, I or like yeah yeah does, does yeah. it feel like you know we're, we're here together or is that person you know thinking about what they ate for breakfast <laughs> and then I guess there's a, like, you know, because after you get to know someone, uh, you know, musicians over time where I'm like, wow, he really needs to go to that place to like where he's like, I wonder what I ate for breakfast to be able to show up in this way that is like really amazing. <laughs> and like, you know, so there's also that. I mean, it's hard, hard to know in just like one sitting. But I love the yeah, like, uh, I mean, it can it can get more detailed where I think, um, you know, where I'm like, oh, that didn't go so well. It's just because it was, you know, uh, in these moments, sometimes it's like, the, uh, not that the entire thing is a success, but you, you get to this like one sort of, you can point to this one glorious like moment where you're like, oh, that was a, that sound, what was that sound? And so that's already a success to me. Like all it needs to be is just this, you know, it doesn't have to be this good thing from start to finish. It just like, you're kind of, it's messy, right? Like you're just kind of doing whatever. So like, if you at least even have one small victory, you're like, yay, that was a success then. Um, or that I, I think in, in this particular situation where I was just like, wow, there was a melody, there was like sections, there were these things that I really love in music where I'm like, it, it had a kind of story or it mm -hmm. had a, mm -hmm. you know, like a, a journey at least. Um, uh, that can also be different in, I, I was telling Sam before this that uh, in one of the classes I, I, I taught, we were talking about improvising and one person was just like, it, it always seems like there needs to be a story or a narrative. It goes from here to here, and like, why is that with improvising? And why does it have to be that way? And I was just like, it doesn't. We could just like, let's try it right now. Let's sit here and let's make a vibe, and let's just do that for 10 minutes, which is actually quite a long time to sit. Uh, and it, that can be really beautiful, too, where you know, it, it's something that can be really static and sparse and 
you just create this sort of zone or whatever and then you sit in it, that can also be really amazing too. So that can be a success as well. Like, um, yeah, yeah. I think I saw another question over here. Yeah. Did I? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much for that, and it was my first time to experience this. <laughs> and I, and to your point, there were there were a couple of times where I thought, "Oh, that's so beautiful," and then it would not be. Right. And, yeah. You know, and 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 I thought that was so interesting. But my question to you, I watch because I get to sit up here. Mm -hmm. I was watching you, and it also felt like you switched leads. Yeah. Like you started, and then there were points where actually you were following mm. Sam and. And you mm -hmm. kept and you kept switching back and forth, and I was thinking, do I is is that true? Is uh, is there a lead and then a, you know back and forth, um, or is mm -hmm. that just something that I'm imagining? So that that's a question. And then my uh, just a comment. I had the opportunity to spend an evening with two um, young women throat singers, mm. and they talked about the their music and the things you were saying before you started to play was so similar to oh, them. They have no idea where the music's going. Mm. Yeah. And they switch back and forth. It's like a, a tug of war. It's a different, like kind of a tug of war. It's like a game. Right. And they switch back who's leading, and the other one has to keep up. And, oh, and I was thinking about that as kind of an analogy to right. the, sure. the traditional throat singing as well. Right. Oh, Thank cool. You. Um, yeah, I was thinking about another kind of thing that I think of as, as a success is when, because um, I think that they're, again, in, in the context of the uh, more popular music um, in, in the May, was, uh, and especially, I mean, I come from a jazz, I come from uh, not even a jazz background, I, I went to jazz school, <laughs> is more correct. <laughs> uh, and um, some of these musics have this kind of hierarchy where it's just like there is the melody or like there is the 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 uh, lead instrument or the singer or like there are these uh, sort of positions and uh, something that I love about um, improvised music is there there isn't that there there is foreground there is background there are like these like places that you can exist in but it doesn't feel so hierarchical in that way um, and that was like for sure like this kind of like where I was just like oh yeah like I. Uh, I, I feel like there's a moment where I'm supporting you and mm. there's this thing and I hear it and I want to hear more of that so I'm going to support and, and or go to the background and let that sort of exist and then and then just be like, well, what happened if I just went blah and then just yeah. like jumped in, you know? <laughs> and, and then you, and instead of you being like, oh, it's background time, you're like, I'm down. And then yeah, you're in there too. Yeah, like, so that's kind of a, a, a fun, yeah, a way to think of structuring music in this way that isn't so... You know, like there is there is the rhythm section. They do this thing, and then there is this thing that goes on top of this, and then it's the it's the words that are the most exp important, or it's the melody, or it's the harmony, whatever. Like, um, it's cool to have this sort of like nebulous, like it's just it's just a matter of whether you want to be on the f in the foreground, background, or or in the ether, in the you yeah. know down low somewhere. Um, that feels really nice to me. It's, yeah, yeah. I don't know if you. Yeah. Well, I, I yeah, I just feel the same way. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, the screen turned green and. Oh yeah, I think we might have an online <laughs> Does that mean show. That is that right? <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. Whoa. Uh, so Matt Glanfield Hi, Matt. is uh, asking. John Zorn. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can you break down your instrument rig? This is a technical question. He's a saxophonist. Okay. Yeah, uh, Matt. Mouth piece, read preference, horn choice. Do you have many, or do you have a favorite, or does that change with the style of music performed? Mm -hmm. I um, I have to be honest. I've never been a gear person. Like this is the thing I, I've noticed about. Music. I've noticed about like you know um, people who are really into like outdoor stuff. Like the gear, like <laughs> culture, can get like really intense pretty quick. Like guitar right? players. Yeah, guitar players, saxophone players for sure. Uh, recording, um, like uh, audio or visual, like you know that sort of place you can go to where there's many components. They all do very many things. You can buy so many of them. Uh, and I've never been that person. I just uh, there is I guess with music sort of this. Uh, way to, um, I keep thinking about Hogwarts because of the ropes, but you know, where they're like, oh, the wand chooses you or whatever, you know, like I, I, I really, I don't know very much about gear. This is uh, one of the first alto saxophones I bought and I was like, this seems pretty good. And I also like that it wasn't what everyone else was using, like it, it, it felt different. And the more that I delved into it, it, it became obvious that there was a pattern that I seemed to like German horns. Um, I learned that semi-recently. Um, 
yeah, so I think uh, there is a element in what I do because uh, in improvising that is so expressive and personal and whatever that uh, the, the sound of my instrument and, and my sound is a very, very uh, integral part to uh, you know, what I do. So I don't, I don't switch too much, like this is my voice and I kind of want it to stay that way. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I play a BNS, uh, I think it's called a Medusa, that's the model. Um, my mouthpiece is a, um, the jazz model of uh, a Eugene Rousseau. Um, I use three and a half V16 <laughs> reeds, I don't know, <laughs> yeah. That's what I... Well, there you go, Matt. If you want to uh, emulate... <laughs> a Ravner. <laughs> like a chair. Kerning's tone. <laughs> there you go. Go yeah. find all those yeah. things, put yeah. them together, and you'll sound exactly That's like right. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Speaking of sound, actually, I wouldn't mind asking you a little bit about um, just extended techniques on the saxophone. Sure. And, what, and like how you approach that. Do you see it as just another sonic palette or mm -hmm. uh, y how do you think about it? Uh, yeah, so, you know, uh, every instrument, there's a, you know, a way that people have spent a very long time figuring out how to play a thing. And that's the way that an instrument can sound and be played very efficiently. And, and I guess there, there was a moment, I think it was actually uh, what, what I call multiphonics, which is where you play more than one note at the same time. Uh, very similar to throat singing, where you kind of just exist and you're kind of like, this is sort of like uh, not quite making it to a note, but then you actually really lean into it and like make two notes happen at the same time, or three or four. Um, when I first heard that, I was like, what is that? That's so, that's so cool. And as a melody instrument kind of primarily, it's, it's really nice to be able to play not just one note at a, at a time. So I start to get really into it where I start to realize these it just kind of sounds like a Chewbacca sound or like a crazy sound, but then I start to realize that they were chords, and then so I got really into like figuring out what chords and and you can be they can be transposed over the so I, there is uh, an element of harmony that I've started to think about on my instrument, but I also just like there um, yeah certain uh, uh, aesthetic sounds that um, you know like I just feel like sound amazing and that I've maybe not been taught that this is a uh, uh, a very, um, you know, uh, uh, a beautiful sound or something, but it's like, uh, it sounds like static to me, like it sounds like radio static, and you're like, oh no, that's just like spit, <laughs> you know, or like, and I'm like, but I love that sound, you know, and, or, or air, just air and uh, clicking, and um, so in, in my sort of sound journey, I, I started to get really into those things and start to figure out what of those sounds I could make on, on my instrument which is many. <laughs> and it's the reason why I've never gone into, just to go back to gear for a minute, like I've never gone into pedals or whatever, because I was just like, there's like so much going on already on this acoustic instrument. I can't even start to think about what it would mean if I started to like add an electronic element to it, you mm -hmm. know? So, um, but that would start to get like really, like, you know, one day, I, I need like another pandemic or something to happen. Yeah. I can figure yeah. that out. <laughs> Two years sabbatical. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. To follow up on that yeah. idea of acoustic choices for the aesthetics, I noticed when you were playing into your, put the, putting the bell into your leg to yeah. dampen the sound coming out of the bell, I had my eyes closed and I was like, it sounded all of a sudden like the sound was coming, bouncing off the back wall. Mm -hmm. Like it was com it was making, this, throwing the sound not from you, but from a different place. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, how much consideration do you, obviously when you walk into a room, you look around and you, maybe play a bit during sound check and feel like, oh, this is the acoustics of this space, but how much do you mm. actively, or do you at all actively think about the physical mm. array or architecture of a space to influence what techniques or sound you'll want to make in that space? And specifically, did this, how do you think, and this is for both of you, how do you think this room, this brick square room with a yeah, moderate yeah. ceiling affected your choices you made just now? I wish I wish I was more aware of my <laughs> surroundings. Sorry, that sounds really funny. I'm like, just like in La La Land in my own brain. But uh, definitely, when I walked in here and played earlier, I was just like, oh, this brick is like really like live. Uh, live. Yeah. yeah, like there's a lot of. Um, so there are certain kinds of. Um, I mean, I guess if we were to have played longer, then that maybe would have come in 
more. But I didn't even think about the fact that, yeah, like behind me is this like corner and that's totally going to throw the sound. Like I, I wasn't actually thinking about it, but I'm glad it did that <laughs> and made it interesting. I, I tend to, yeah, I don't know, depending on so many things, I guess, to, uh, of considering how my surroundings like affect the music, it, sometimes that is certainly you're like, oh, this one element like is going to be really cool, but sometimes I'm, I'm just in my own head and not, or in a daze and not thinking about it. So I think it depends. Th there was a, a, a immediate attention to the brick in here that mm. I was like, whoa, like it mm -hmm. sounds pretty live in here. Yeah, very mm. crazy. Yeah, to answer you from my perspective, uh, this is a really quiet instrument. So I'm not always super attentive to the space explicitly, but what I am attentive to is the sound of the space and more specifically how much I'm needing to put into the instrument in order mm. to feel like I'm being heard or that I can even hear myself. Mm -hmm. uh, and I can, tell, I can tell you definitively that it can be a very taxing experience when I don't feel mm. like I can hear myself or that like the band is hearing me because then I need to put so much more energy into the instrument, uh, which changes the way that I play completely. Yeah. Uh, so one thing that I think was a genuine advantage of the being in this room is that I could hear myself really well. It's a right. quiet audience. But then there's also a sufficient amount of dampening from the books and from the carpet, yeah. from the people, that it didn't feel like I was also like blowing out the room in any real sense. Yeah. So uh, I think then it just changes the choices that I end up making. Mm -hmm. It must be, yeah, it must be really hard. I mean, I, I, I sometimes experience, it's, it's a lot less. I mean, the saxophone's a pretty loud instrument, but in some of the context, performance contexts I'm in, it's just like, you know, there's like a line of people with like stacks of amplifiers, and I'm just like, whoo, okay, this is gonna be <laughs> a, like a, you know, a more tiring night. It's like my ears are gonna be tired. And you just think of how all of that affects what you have to, to contribute, right? Like, mm. I mean, I guess, in, again, in this context where we're, kind of, it's not like, you know, oh, I'm just going to read this thing and that's the piece. It's just like you're kind of having to be on your toes and aware. And if you're starting off already being like, ah, oh, it's going to be hard or like, oh, I'm going to be tired, then that is going to very much affect the music. Um, sometimes in a way that is nice and surprising, which is sort of the point, you know, like that something might happen that you weren't expecting anyway. Um, but yeah, it, it does, you're just like, well, is this, <laughs> is this going to be uh, different? <laughs> Or, yeah. I wonder if you can talk a little bit about, um, I want to ask you about your creative process, but before we do, since we're still sort of in the subject of like improvising with others, mm -hmm. uh, I wonder if you could talk a little bit about if you feel like there's an, like an ethic to improvising. An ethic. Like a, like a, a way of being with others right. that is most supportive to creating music with them. Ooh, I mean, yeah, this is where it can things can really get abstracted into just like way of life. I mean, like, you know, how do you show up uh, anywhere or for anyone? You know, like, uh, like I, th I think for myself, like, I, I, it would be really tricky to, or I'm always that person where I'm like, I would never want to tell anyone how to be, but I do know that for myself, like, again, knowing that it's like, you're putting yourself in a somewhat vulnerable, mm -hmm. you know, and that there's a lot of trust. And um, so I want to show up in a way that is um, very open and, and, and uh, compassionate. And, you know, like there, there are these things that I, I think, yeah, like I don't want to show up in a way um, or, or, or sort of enter into a space with someone that if, if yeah, like they're, they're not reciprocating those things, like being open and being compassionate, like if they're showing up and, you know, they've got an agenda, <laughs> you know, it's mm. just kind of like, <laughs> like I'm gonna play all my cool <laughs> shit on you and you're yeah, just gonna follow. Yeah. That is like, you know, that's not my preference, but I'm just kind of like, I don't know, like maybe the music that comes out of this will be great, but maybe I don't want to, uh, you know, uh, sort of put my, s or, or, spend lots of time in that sort of context like mm -hmm. it, it, it will you know at, at least for me dictate where I'm like oh like that was you know what it was and it's fine but I, I want to put more time and energy into the spaces that feel like they're open and feel like there's an understanding or um, yeah I think I think mainly just that uh, openness and and listening is like just the two most huge things and that is for sure the same in showing up as a human. I mean, if it's just any of the things that you would want as a human 
being like, you know, in any sort of social context, it's it very much is is applicable to like, you know, Playing this sort of, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so say it's not the, you know, a, a free improvised, you know, uh, Context. I still want those things. <laughs> like so, when you start to think about it, I don't know. There's a lot of this kind of stuff that I think very much relates to how um, I think of like moving through life, or like how I make choices, or how or any of that stuff is like very, um, yeah, very much. They work in tandem. Kind sure. Of. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's great. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess yeah. So then this leads me into thinking. Do you, how conscious of your creative choices in the musical moment do you find yourself? Do you find that it's an active choice? It's like, mm -hmm. I'm going to move into this space now. Mm. Or do you find that it's a reactive situation, an embodied action? Yeah, sometimes it's those things. But, uh, you know, I, I, in, a lot of people say this, and I totally agree, that I'm actually trying to not think about it. Like, I'm trying to be, uh, like, in all this sort of, uh, uh, experience of playing lots or practicing or working lots is all to sort of, uh, you know, make me uh, uh, be able to show up in a kind of state. And, and if I'm in that state, then I'm not actually thinking consciously or that's the hope, that's the mm -hmm. goal. Like, and that can be sort of like, I mean, it, I, it's probably the same in like meditation, right? These things where it's like, you're not really thinking about it. Like you're just being, you know, like I want to, my ideal situation is like I've shown up and we're going to play and I'm just being and all the things I do to pr prepare myself to be able to do that, that's what my practice is, you know, and that's what um, I, I hope to achieve is that more and more. And it's often difficult. I mean, the world is a very <laughs> intense place, like in general right now, all of these things. And so sometimes you're showing up and there's all these things and how do you shut that off, right? Like and, and show up in this way. It's really, really difficult. So it's I'm I'm certainly not successful most times but uh i think w when music my favorite music when it feels the most successful is when i uh have i opened my eyes and it's and the music's done and i'm like wow i did it like i was like in this place where i wasn't thinking and i wasn't trying to make all these like cool smart decisions you know it's <laughs> usually when it goes really really wrong <laughs> um it's just trying to be cool or trying to be smart or trying to and so if I just show up and I just, and, and that trust again, so that trust that you're giving to the other mm. person or the people or the space uh, is also the trust you're giving in yourself that like, this is going to be great. This is going to be fun. I just need to trust like that I'm showing up in my best self and what is happening is great <laughs> and uh, great, objectively great or not, whatever. Um, that feels like a su success to me, I think. Yeah. Um. Can, can you, you also make albums and you write music and I wonder if you can talk about moving between those mm -hmm. ideas, moving between composing for other people, composing for yourself uh, and, and, and improvising and if you factor in uh, parameters for yourself yeah. or for others into your compositional process. Yeah. When I say parameters, parameters on like restrictions on improvising, mm -hmm. uh, like boundaries. Yeah, uh, they all relate and they all intersect. Um, I find it very difficult to move from one to another. So, and all it is, I think, is maybe just, yeah, an experience in a way. Um, I tend to spend time in each of them in like these kind of cycles or, or rotations but um, sometimes as a professional you're asked to sort of move pretty quickly uh, from one place to another. I've always had a really hard time doing that so I mean there's the performing part um, and I think uh, sometimes I'm asked to show up and to play someone's music and I do that and that's really great and I, I maybe have to go home and write music because that's the only time I have to do it and that's a little bit difficult mm -hmm. for sure but um, uh, the writing part is is interesting because that is a different aspect right like the performing you're executing your your uh, instrumentalist you are executing the thing and then when you go home and you're writing or I find like recording or composing like our songwriting those all live in the world of just like there's something in my head and I want to express it or translate it out into being so that's one thing and then there is this like yeah like 
improvise and we're like maybe I'll go somewhere else and then it feels like it's not about me it's about like what what is who we are here together so that is mm -hmm. a different also a different uh, place I think they all each have um, things that I that really interest me that I'm very curious about but and they all intersect but they're also all very different <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah and I have trouble um, sometimes moving through them but it you know one of the ways that they intersect is also like you know an age-old question of like, well, if you, if something is composed, if something is agreed upon a, beforehand, then how is it improvised at the same time? But it's just like, no, they can work together in tandem or, you know, uh, this like a composition to me, I think is, yeah, like what you're saying, parameters, I have done that before. Instead of explicitly trying to get an idea expressed on a piece of paper to then be executed. I actually just want parameters or limitations of to, to improvise within. So it's like a context, you know, like, um, and that creation of that context is the composition. So, yeah. I don't know if that's answering. <laughs> I've gone off topic. No, 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 yeah, that's it, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, sure. Oh, we have a question. Hi. Hi. I've, I've really enjoyed this. I, it's like really opening my mind to kind of different ways that music can be and that Yay. sound can be. I remember going to a new music concert last year and it was like five people, there was a pianist and the pianist at some point just started like smacking like the keyboard of the like finger part like yeah. against and I was like, oh, this is music still. Like, okay, yeah. I see. <laughs> And, and so all of this is like, and you know, what you're saying about the air kind of coming through and just like listening to the spit, yeah. right? Like that, that's, it's just really interesting. Mm -hmm. My question is, cause you said something earlier, like a couple minutes ago about like the preparation that goes into it. So other mm -hmm. than, you know, going to jazz school or like mm -hmm. just sitting at home and making sound, like what mm -hmm. do you do to prepare for this? Yeah, uh, I'm starting to understand very clearly that I need to care just for myself again, cause it's just like, trying to show up in this way that where you're most open and you're ready to listen you kind of just need to be in a healthy place and whatever that means for anyone like uh, I've for sure just like like no time got to go to work or got to go do, do these things or got to go on tour now and, and just like completely uh, like uh, been unaware of what that even means to, to myself or I'm like whoa if I wake up and I, and I stretch like I just feel way better <laughs> like I should just do that every day or eating healthily or so there are like very human aspects to it. I'm just like oh yeah I need to take care of myself and my body and my mind and that is a huge part to being able to um, express like right like I mean uh, uh, or you would express in a very different way if you weren't it's not that it's bad or good but uh, perhaps I would express in a much more, um, yeah, a uh, challenged way or something, right? Like, uh, or to challenge what is I'm, I'm working against. But the other things that come into play, I think uh, a lot of uh, what I feel like I, I've built and learned uh, has been with others. Like, so I play a lot with other people. Like, I improvise a lot with others. That's It's not only my favorite thing to do, but it just, uh, yeah, that really helps to, you know, give me, I don't know, I, it, it helps sort of hone a skill of how to listen uh, in different ways and how to be surprised or to deal with unexpectedness and, and, with, and to meet that with openness instead of like sort of um, shrinking away or getting, um, you know, defensive. I don't know what other word to use because sometimes you're just like, what was that? And they're like, do they not like what I just played? Or like those, so those kind of silly like thoughts can come in or like, I have an amazing idea. And you're like, why is nobody listening to this? This is so amazing and nobody's following me. Um, those kinds of things of just trying to be honest about it and like, you know, put myself in these situations where those are things are happening. You're like, you know, that was pretty like, like who cares? Maybe this is great and it just needs to like exist and go over there and that's fine. And um, so I think there are a lot of um, kinds of preparations that are, are, yeah, very separate from like sitting at home and playing long tones. And I don't know the last time I sat at home and played scales, you know, like I don't know where that sits in me, but like I guess my priorities are very clearly in other places. <laughs> so, you know, um, yeah, I do spend quite a bit of time sitting there and playing chords because that's really fun on my saxophone because I'm just like, what is that sound? <laughs> I'll just do it for an hour. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Take the fancy mic. Take the fancy mic. Thank you so, so much. This is, it is fascinating. We're all having a wonderful time. <laughs>
we had a wonderful time when you played and we're also learning a lot here. Um, you mentioned very early on about the kind of um, institutional settings where jazz is taught and, and there's, it's come under a lot of fire for this because of mm -hmm. is this where it should be happening or the way we're doing it, is that the way that it should be happening? Mm -hmm. um, you, you mentioned you went to jazz school. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm, I guess I'm wondering to what extent of what you receive as a training of groundwork in a jazz program mm. um, is, uh, I, I guess, to what extent are the, is the jazz programming teaching world responding to the world that you are in? Uh, is there preparation? I mean, you, you clearly have to, learn the <laughs> you have to learn the basics, mm -hmm. but you also need to, um, be elsewhere, and I guess, and I, I mean, I, and this is also just because I don't know. To what extent is the world of jazz at your place right now, mm. and to what extent isn't it? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, there are so many things I want to yeah. say about this. Um, I will say that when I entered music school, jazz school, I went to York University first. Um, there, uh, at that time, I don't know where where it's at now, but. The program was not necessarily split up into you are in the jazz program, classical program, mm -hmm. education program. You just, there were courses that were like jazz. Or like this is a jazz ensemble, you can take it. Uh, or this is it, and it was, it was very open. I'm very fortunate to have gone through a program that way first because I think a lot of us are like, oh my God, I can go to school and then play music all the time. It's gonna be amazing. Like that's gonna be so cool. And then you show up and you're like, wait a minute, what's happening? Like this is, I'm being told that I must, I must be this way to be successful. And if you're not that way, it's a hard world out there. 2% of you are gonna make it. If you're not exactly like this, you're not gonna make it. And that was like so upsetting to so many of us. Like I had a really hard time at school. I know a lot of people who have gone through music school you know, have, uh, and that's not just in the jazz world, I'm sure that is uh, similar in other, uh, like in classical, in the classical stream. Um, it's really upsetting because, you know, at a certain point you step back and you're like, wait, wasn't the whole point of this to, to learn how to express? And I'm being told how to express. Um, that is very uh, upsetting. <laughs> I was very upset to find that at school. Um, and I, I mean, I have so much to say about what, ja, ja, like honestly to me, f what I feel jazz is, isn't just a repertoire, isn't just a vocabulary, it is a way of being, you know? And so to have that set in a place where uh, that so many people are, are already sort of, you know, uh, not able to access it because of financial access, you know, of, uh, I mean, I was pretty shocked to learn how much, uh, you know, uh, student tuition is right now for one year at the jazz program at U of T. I mm. was like so shocked. I was like, that is the way it is now. I imagine that our teachers who were teaching us in jazz school never had to do that or never had to pay or do, um, you know, pay rent the way that our generation now has to pay. All these sort of difficulties are, are those are very real challenges that are uh, happening now and were not true then. And so I think of some of my jazz teachers where they're like, this is the world you're going into. And, and yeah, I didn't feel it was relevant. And I, I was like really uh, confused where they're just like, you know, the 70, you know, jazz orchestras in the city, you're gonna have to get into one of them. And I was like, there are zero, <laughs> there are none now, there are zero. It, I guess that's how you, you made your living, but that was 20 years ago and now we're here. And nobody mentioned once that what I'm doing as a living now was, was an option. So I guess, um, I, I wonder about uh, the ability to understand that there is never just one way for anything. <laughs> I mean, like, I don't know, I know that seems obvious, but there is a, a, a way that things can get lost, you know, uh, and I, I, we are all guilty of it. You get lost in the weeds and you start thinking about really, you know, like minute details and you forget to like, just like zoom out and to be like, oh yeah, the whole point of this is to learn about music and like, what is that to you? This is gonna be many things to many different people. What does success look like? What does a job look like when you leave school? Like, um, I, so many of my friends who are doing music full time uh, uh, who aren't uh, teaching, I mean, that's what I went to school for at first. I wanted to be a music teacher, but in performance at least, like a lot of us are in these sort of, uh, 
have these op very grateful to have all these opportunities to tour and like that was never even a, a thought <laughs> like to any of the people that told me that I could maybe play saxophone like uh, in a band and and with my friends and that could be a, a, a like that's a viable you know option to to make a living or to compose music for TV or film like that wasn't even mentioned <laughs> you know not once you know like so I hope that it's it's changing now I think that they're just like any institution, it's just really hard. The, the things are slow moving, and it's hard to keep up with what is happening in real time in society. But I just hope that um, I mean, thank you for inviting me here. Like things like this, and the talks that I and and working with uh, you know some of the st uh, students um, or undergraduate students at U of T. Like these are opportunities for me to just also talk about this stuff and like. And, and ensure that it's just like, don't worry, like, you know, it, it, it's confusing, but like, I think there, there are a lot of options that just are never, uh, maybe are, are, it's not possible for us to even be aware of right now in your position as a student in a jazz school to exit out of there and, and into the real life and, and find that there's a lot out there. Um, and that maybe like not all of us were meant to be concert masters uh, in the symphony. Like that's one person, <laughs> you know, of many. <laughs> so it's just like, you know, I, I, there was a time where that was like, no, like you need to be at this level because that's your future. You know, like it's it's kind of insane actually. <laughs> like I don't know, it's a um, not the most productive way uh, to educate people. <laughs> I would say, like I don't know. I could go on, because then there's like jazz as a, anyway, I, I think uh, I should stop talking um, about this <laughs> in particular. Thank you for asking that question though. Yeah. I have very strong feelings about education in general. I love teaching, I love learning. And so it was also very upsetting for me to appear at school and have such a horrible time where like, well, this is crazy, I love learning. <laughs> like what is that, and I love music, what's happening, you know? Like, um, so yeah, my hope for educating education I yeah very very um, a topic I care very very much about so. Karen can I ask you a question about yes this <laughs> then. Uh, how how do you approach uh, educating uh, like a, a saxophonist like yeah. a saxophone student I know you teach some you have s some private students so I'm just curious like in what way do you uh, yeah, support their learning. Yeah, I I actually had to stop teaching because I was touring so much. Uh, I the last time I, I, I taught privately was like, uh, I mean a couple in the pandemic, which was super weird. But like uh, just before that, I think like a couple years before that, I'd stopped teaching. And, and it's it's uh, it's really sad. I really hope I find my way back to it. But in that, I again in a lot of what we I've been talking about here today those lessons is not to become a musician, it's to become a human, you know, like, and the context is music, and that when I started um, thinking about that I was gonna be a teacher, I was just like, well, I, I can teach anything, like, it doesn't matter, like, I, the idea is that you are, you are helping someone um, intake a lot of information about all sorts of things, um, how does that relate to them, what do, are they curious about, like, where does it go, and how does that, like, you know, like, uh, and if that context is music, then that's great. There's so much we can talk about. Why do we choose to do this? Or should, uh, what is so interesting about this? And so all of that, I think, um, is how I, I teach. It's, it's not just about music or to be able to execute music proficiently. Like, I, I think that, it, again, because it's a, it, it's a avenue of expression. So it doesn't, you know, there is no right way. So then it's just like, well, what do you want to express? Like there's, you know, and what is life about and what are choices about and how do we uh, go about choosing things? And so, um, yeah, I think very much that teaching was about that. Yeah, and, and, and so like what a privilege it is that like, you know, these, these kids or um, adults, like, uh, yeah, I was, I was talking to Mary about like, um, my favorite students were my uh, students that were like, Oh yeah, I'm retired now, so uh, my wife got me a saxophone. <laughs> and I'd be like, oh my god, this is going to be good. Okay, here we go. And um, you, you know, like I, I think that uh, it, it's just so interesting to. Um, I actually lost my train of thought. I just because I was just like, oh yeah, I love those students so much. Um, in uh, teaching, yeah, I guess it was just never about, um, you know. Oh, I had a really good point too. It's gone. Um. It's okay. <laughs> I, like I wonder if like it be like. 
you talked about the students that yeah. are, you know, just are coming to it late in life because they're mm -hmm. interested in it, love it, whatever. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I wonder if it might be the case that it's, I'm just going to say something and you can tell me if you agree yeah. or disagree, right. uh, is it's about like engendering like a why you love this, in, like why this person might enjoy these sounds. Or it's like, oh, mm -hmm. you're really into this. Okay, let's like, let's follow this rabbit hole. Right. But also through, you know. I guess, yeah, I mean, the, the ability to, um, oh wait, maybe I'm remembering a point. Great. <laughs> <laughs> was that the point to like remind me how to? Uh, I think that when you sit down, uh, I was teaching privately, so I sit down one on one with uh, someone who's just starting, someone who's curious about whatever. Uh, you're just sitting down one on one. You get this moment where you're just talking one on one to each other and uh, and and trying to figure each other out or like help each other out in this way. Because I mean, I, I think it was very much a two way thing. I. I, I got so much from teaching, you know, as well. Um, so to sit down with someone, someone's agreeing to, you know, uh, sit with you in this room and spend half an hour, an hour with you, and then you just talk and you just explore and you just like, um, yeah, so whether it's them saying like, I'm really curious about this and like, yeah, I don't know what that is, let's figure it out and like what, and maybe the next thing you pick, there's some sort of like correlation to that or like there's some sort of reason why you're, and maybe it's it's because it's just all very different, like I don't know, you know, and that uh, that's such a personal thing for everyone that I guess, yeah, it was really lovely and interesting to me to, to figure that out one-on-one -on -one and everyone coming from such a different place and a different context and have different goals. Like I said, like sometimes it wasn't about being a, a musician. It was just like, you know, this, what a wonderful thing. Like, you know, it's like you're, you're going to learn this instrument. You're going to have this for the rest of your life. You're going to get to have music in your life. Like it doesn't have to be mean a job. It doesn't have to mean, you know, I don't know. Like it could mean so many different things. And for someone who's retired and just got a saxophone and gets to play like a melody once in a while, like that, that might be it. And that's totally great. You know, like no heavy expectations of like, well, you should be practicing lots because you need to play this instrument well. And you're just like, no, who cares? Like you're retired, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> you know? So um, yeah, still maybe not answer your question, but that was totally the point. I was no, that's, that's <laughs> that's okay. okay. Um, um, we have seven minutes left. I'm wondering if any, one in the audience has any more questions? I have another one that I would like okay, to ask. Okay, sure. Yeah. But I'd like to open it up. So, yeah. I'd love to get to play again after your question. Oh. Uh, okay. okay. That's my question. Is can you play? Again? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, maybe we can end with like sure. a short thing. Yeah, yeah. sure. Um, my question is about community. Hmm. And so you've brought it up a few times, you know about community being important and it's what brought you to music, it's what brought you to this place, it's what, mm -hmm. you know, sort of your love of community and the importance of community to your, mm -hmm. to your, to your life and career and personhood, maybe, uh, not to put words in your mouth. Mm -hmm. uh, but I also know that you have engaged in some community organizing to yeah. the extent that there's, you know, you've put together, I think it's Tone Festival is the, yeah, yeah which fantastic uh, <laughs> festival that happens in Toronto. Is it still ongoing now? I feel like you still program some things. Yeah, there's going to be some programming this year. Um, Sweet. I'm also interim artistic director at the Guelph Jazz Festival. Mm -hmm. um, there is not uh, much straight ahead jazz. There, it is very much on the like experimental left-leaning side of jazz. But um, in that sort of, I think what inevitably happens when you're part of a community is you're just like, what do I need to do to keep sustaining this community and helping? And that um, all these little parts as a, as a musician, as an audience listener, as an organizer, these are all aspects of an ecosystem, right? And all of those things need to sort of be filled for it to be able to not only sustain, but thrive. And so uh, at some point, yeah, like after touring lots and I was just like, I want, these people to come to my home, like where things are awesome, like Toronto's so great, I want musicians to come through here. And then that eventually led into uh, uh, organizing and uh, no, organizing shows and then having this little circuit and then that turned into a job. <laughs> and then like, I mean, this uh, interim artistic director is crazy, I don't know. <laughs> So like, I mean, now uh, I have these other skills now where I'm like, oh yeah, like I, I have to curate, I have to like, you know, deal with logistics of putting on a festival, I have to 
uh, you know, find sponsors and, and uh, talk to, you know, communicate with the board of directors and like there's all this stuff. And I sat on a, a couple boards for a while and learned about sort of the arts admin world. And the more I did it, same thing, it always comes back to her. I was just like, wow, this job is actually just holding a lot of space for a lot of people. That came up with your friend, um, the AD at uh, Buddies and Bad Time Theaters, or where he said that, and I was just like, that is exactly what my job is. Wow, like I, I, need, I have people, I have staff, I have um, sort of governance, I have artists, I have all these people where I'm there to like listen to them and hold some space for them and see what I can do to help, like you mm. know, um, and all of that stuff is important for the community to thrive, and that's like. Yes, this is their one big gig at, the, at a festival this year, but it also, you know, enables them to be able to keep traveling or to keep playing their music or making their music. Um, so it's really important to sort of, for me, to keep sort of all those aspects in a, in a way. Not everyone is meant to do all those things, and I can do some, and some people can do one really well, and we just all have to work together to make sure that, you know, all the bits fit together. Um, the time is turning red. It's turning red. So, <laughs> so we have we have just a few minutes to do a tune. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's let's uh, yeah a, a, a tune a, a quick tune a tune a tune a tune. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
opportunity to join us uh, if you're interested in more events like this. Join our mailing list. Uh, I forget the name, but it'll pop up on the screen. Uh, <laughs> and, Negative uh, 18 seconds. <laughs> 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 it's really funny, the screen. Anyway. One more round of applause for Karen. Thank you.